Hey everyone, this is Learn Algebra Faster, and in this video we are going to answer the question, what is a bar graph? A bar graph is a graph similar to what you see on your screen, and a bar graph does a good job of showing quantities of things. So bar graphs are fairly simple once you understand the four key parts. So the four key parts to a bar graph are number one, the title, Number two, the horizontal axis with units. The units are important. Number three, the vertical axis with units. And number four, the key, which is sometimes called a legend, depending on what book you're using or what teacher you have. So on your screen, you see an example of a bar graph. So let's identify the four key parts of this bar graph, and let's see exactly what it's talking about. So number one, probably the easiest thing to find, is the bar graph title. And that is here, and it's the shirt color of people in an auditorium. So that title explains to us exactly what we're looking for, what, what data is being shown on the screen. So in this case, we have a number of people in an auditorium, and we count their shirt color, and that is shown on the screen. So you can see pretty easily that the color that shows up most is yellow, followed by red, then followed by brown, and green. So you can tell by, by this graph like which, which shirt color shows up the most in this group of people. But we always start with the bar graph title because that is the, that's kind of like the summary of the data that's being shown. So now that we found the title, let's find the horizontal axis. So the horizontal axis is actually this line that goes from left to right on the screen. And I told you earlier that the units are important. So in this case, the units are, are not a measurement of inches or dollars or anything like that. Right now, on a bar graph, the, the units can be qualitative. And so in this case, the units are actually colors. So they're colors of shirts. And, and that's okay, because a bar graph is pretty versatile. It can show lots of different things. So... Um, so the colors are what we're, are we're looking at here, and we explained earlier that yellow has the most, then red, then brown, then green. So the horizontal axis is always down here, and like I said, sometimes it will be, it, it will be lots of different things. Um, the horizontal axis can change depending on what, what bar graph you're looking at. So the third thing that we want to look for on a bar graph is the vertical axis. And so the vertical axis is what is measured going up and down. So I'll circle that now and show it. So this is the vertical axis. And I said that units were important. Remember, on, on every graph we want to use units, not only because you would, you would lose points on an exam or a homework paper, but also because this does a really good job of explaining what we're looking at. So in this case, we have numbers. So in, in this case, we're counting, we're counting shirts. And the range for this graph starts at zero and goes all the way up to 70. Now, depending on your bar graphs, this vertical axis can change. If we had lots more people, then the top number would be even higher than 70. If we were counting dollars, we would use different units. If we were measuring miles, we would use different units. So the vertical axis is important because it shows you what, what you're looking at. And then the fourth key part of a bar graph is called the key. And so that is this part right here. Now on a bar graph where you only show single bars, you, you notice that, that each color only has one bar. The key isn't as important, but we always want to show the key because it is a key description of what we're showing on the bar graph. So in this case, this, 
this bar graph actually doesn't do a great job because it just shows blue. Um, that's the that's the color of the bars, and the title of this graph does a good job and it gives you enough information to understand what you're saying but you always want to look off to the side sometimes it's on the right side sometimes it's on the left side sometimes it's on the bottom um, you always want to look for this key um, because it is it's a good way to describe the things on the bar graph so now that we know our key our key things are the title the horizontal axis, the vertical axis, and, and the key, which is sometimes called a legend. Let's look at a couple more examples. Okay, so let's quickly identify the title, the horizontal axis, vertical axis, and, and key of these graphs. So, let's start with the graph on the left side. Okay, when we look at this, we see that this is a double bar graph. So we have in each section we have we have two different two different bars on each measurement. So that's something we can we can look at in just a minute. The first thing that we want to identify is the title. So number one, right here, favorite movie type by grade level. So that explains what we're looking at on this graph. Then the horizontal axis is here at the bottom, going left to right. We notice that the units here are actually different types of movies. So action movies, documentary, drama, and sports. So those are the, those are the units that we're using for this bar graph. Now the vertical axis is right here. Sorry, horizontal axis is number two, vertical axis is number three, and we notice that similar to the last example, this is just measuring quantity. This is just measuring the number of movies. And then we look for the key, and that is found here, and that was that was number four. Now if you see the key, this is this is a good example of why the key is important we see that the key shows that the blue that the blue bars are for people in grade 10 and the red bars show people in grade 11 so we didn't just measure everyone in the school we measured people in in two specific grades and we have shown them accordingly so if you notice that in the in the sports movie we see that actually more people in grade 11 like sports movies than in grade 10. Okay, let's go to the let's go to the graph on the right. First, let's find the title. The title of this graph is car prices. Now, it's not as descriptive as the last graph, but we'll see if it's good enough. So, car prices is the title. Let's find the horizontal axis. It's here at the bottom. And the units shown here are three different types of cars. So Toyota, Honda, Ford. Those are the actual units on this graph. Now let's find the vertical axis. It's here going from bottom to top. And the units for this are different than some of our other examples. So the units here, if you look, are in dollars. And that's okay. But you, you will see that we did start with a low dollar value and we went to a high dollar value and so you can tell which which car prices are higher which ones are lower now the fourth and final thing that we want to look look at for every single bar graph is the key and in this case we show that the blue lines represent used cars and the red lines represent new cars so you can notice that in all three cases, the, the new car is a higher price than the used car. So the four key things that we look for are the title, the horizontal axis, we always pay attention to the units, the 
vertical axis and we pay attention to units on the vertical axis and the key and so those things are the are the key parts of a bar graph and a bar graph above everything is used to compare and count basically every single bar graph can compare multiple things and it counts quantities so a bar graph is something that will hopefully be more useful to you and it's it's a really good way to show comparisons of things and to count things and the and the bar graph is versatile because you can use lots of different units and you can compare lots of different things thanks